Well, hey, Cayuga Christian Church family, we are so excited to welcome you here tonight, Christmas Eve, here at Cayuga Christian Church. And tonight, we want to ask one question, and that is, what is Christmas all about? It's about that, isn't it? About the gifts? Yeah. This is nice. Three wise men, three gifts. Three gifts. That's what it's about, right? right? Yeah. No, it's not. Actually, tonight we want to unpack that question with you, and we hope it's a blessing for you. So, join us. We're going to sing. Yep. We're going to enjoy some time together as a family, and we're going to learn what Christmas really is all about.
Well, hey, happy Christmas Eve to all of our church family joining us here online tonight. We are so glad that you are here with us. Let me ask you, have you ever received a birth announcement from new parents-to-be? Yeah, I can remember just a week or so after our first baby was born, we took her to J.C. Penney's to have our very first family photo taken together, and, and we endured what, uh, what was more than an hour of outfit changes with a cranky baby, all so we can capture that perfect family photo that we can print and circulate for our birth announcements to all of our loved ones through the U.S. Postal System. Anybody else out there remember those days? Man, have times changed or what? I mean, there was a day when birth announcements were not received until after the birth of the baby. But now social media allows for birth announcements to be made in real time. And besides that, now parents-to-be have started this new tradition uh, called a gender reveal party where they celebrate the, 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 the moment they find out whether or not their baby's going to be a boy or a girl. And, and, and so, so now we're making these baby announcements before the birth of the baby. What if I told you, though, that such announcements really aren't all that new? In fact, what if I told you that the God of heaven and earth actually made the first birth announcement and he celebrated the first gender reveal party before they were ever trendy? You see, in Luke chapter 1, the angel Gabriel made such an announcement to a young bride-to-be named Mary. Here's what the angel said to her. The angel said, you will be with child and you will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. But then this is what the angel said of this child. He will be great and he will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him a throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Judah forever. His kingdom will never end. You see, here we have the angel Gabriel announcing the birth of Jesus before Mary even conceived. And this announcement comes at a time when God's people needed great hope and encouragement. Uh, just, Just think about what it would mean that God is sending the Son of the Most High to sit upon David's throne and He will establish a kingdom that will never end. You see, this promise, it may not mean so much to us here today, but to the people to whom this was written, it was written to a nation whose kingdom actually ended a long time ago. To a people who had all but lost their national identity and pride because they had been passed off from government to government like last year's Christmas fruitcake. And yet Gabriel's announcement to Mary was actually a sequel to a prophetic announcement made before the nation of Israel had even succumbed to a foreign rule. The announcement came in Isaiah chapter 9. You see, 700 years before the birth of our Savior, God made a promise through a prophet named Isaiah to His people who lived in the land of Judah. And He made this big announcement to those people forewarning them of a time that was yet to come. To truly appreciate the significance of this announcement, we need to look into that time that had yet to come. You need to understand the cultural context of their moment. You see, God's people had become accustomed to hearing such messages. This wasn't new to them. Historically, the people of God had received inspired messages from heaven through prophets like Moses or or Samuel or Elijah. See, typically God would send such messengers during troubled times for His people. And such messages usually carried one of two different tones. It could be, first, an announcement of judgment, which meant punishment for God's people because God's people chose to turn their backs on God. Or secondly, it carried the tone of a promise of rescue for God's people. 
And what's concerning about this prophecy that Isaiah makes in Isaiah chapter 9 is that the message that he brought from God actually conveyed both tones. It is a message of righteous judgment that will fall upon the people of God because they had turned their backs on God. The devastation that they will face will be horrendous. Their country will fall into the hands of an enemy nation. That's what Isaiah came for telling. In those days, the nation of Assyria was quickly becoming the world's dominant superpower. However, the growing power of Assyria was not the result of their political skill or their military dominance or even their economic strength. Rather, God was raising up Assyria to become the enemy of His people. God was actually using this enemy nation to execute judgment upon His unrepentant people. And scattered throughout this Old Testament book, This book of judgment written by Isaiah are glimmers popping up every so often of hope. He promises that God will rescue them. In the midst of God's punishment, the prophet Isaiah reminds that God's unwavering faithfulness to His unchosen people, His covenant promises to those people, and His redemptive plan to those people does not change. But God's rescue plan seems to come in the most unlikely of means. Let me read this promise to you. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7 says it this way. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of His government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over His kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. You see, this divine message was spoken to God's people in the midst of a national crisis. This promise, it actually interrupts many descriptions of judgment. And and while this promise won't be fulfilled for another 700 years, the prophecy of Isaiah reminds us that amidst pain and confusion and sorrow, that God is not absent. No, He's faithfully carrying out his plan of salvation. I want you to think about this promise for a moment. To a people whose leader had abandoned God. To a nation of people who had turned their backs on God. God is promising a new leader who will be sent from God. And this new leader will rule over a kingdom that will never end. This is the real meaning of Christmas right here. You see, Christmas is about the birth of Jesus. And the birth of Jesus means the arrival of a new world ruler. He's not a metaphorical king. His throne is real and his rule is sovereign. He didn't establish a local physical government, nor did he begin a new nation. No, Jesus' kingdom is unlike any earthly kingdom ever before or that will ever be. That's because this kingdom that Jesus comes to establish is not of this earth. It's a heavenly kingdom that's eternal. So this Christmas, I, I guess we need to ask the question, what does this new kingdom mean for us? Well, to answer that question, let's step back from this Old Testament promise for a moment. And let's think about this year that we're about to conclude. In 2020, we were hit with a global pandemic. We live amongst a federal government that is so divided that they've barely been able to do anything to work together. We've witnessed social unrest in every major city in our nation. 
we've struggled with distrust as we've felt government officials overstepping their authority into our personal freedoms. Not to mention one of the most contentious presidential elections in our country's history. All while an overwhelming number of people that we know and love face loss, grief, and sorrow at a level we've never known before. Think even more specifically about our own church family. Right here in Vermilion County, this has been a year when many of us have experienced isolation and loneliness. Some of us have suffered tremendous fear and worry, if not for our own health, then for the health of those that we love who are most at risk. Some of us have been forced to carry an overwhelming load at work, so many hours away from our families, while others of us have been rendered unable to go to work because of the circumstances. Some of us have been unable to gather here with the church for many months. Dozens of us have had, have had loved ones sick and who've been in the hospital and we could not be there with them. And a few of us, this has been a year of tremendous loss as we've buried loved ones without many from our family and from our community there with us. This has been a tough year. And, and for you, whether this has been a year of inconvenience or if this has been a year filled with sorrow, I want you tonight to see what Jesus' birth truly means for us. What this heavenly kingdom means for us today. To answer that question, look back at the birth announcement recorded in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. I'll read it again. It says, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Now most babies just have one name written upon their birth announcement. But of this newborn king, one name simply wasn't sufficient. You see, these names given to this newborn king actually give us a glimpse into what this child will do. Imagine reading a birth announcement with names such as, He will be called Excellent Musician, Marathon Runner, or Future CEO of a Major Corporation. Birth announcements just don't list accomplishments, right? Right? Well, that's because unless thumb-sucking, blinking, and drooling count, there actually really aren't any accomplishments to list on a baby's birth announcement. But this baby's different. You see, Isaiah chooses to list four names. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Each of these names mention the incredible attributes of our Savior God who was sent to rescue humanity from our sin. See, first of all, Jesus is called our wonderful counselor. He is a supernatural source of extraordinary wisdom and divine compassion. Jesus came so that we don't have to go through anything like this by ourselves. He is wonderful, and He comes alongside to counsel us. He offers an invitation, much like the one He offered in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, where He says, Come to Me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. See, as we've navigated the unknowns of 2020, along with all the heartbreaking news that we maybe or didn't trust, or the medical and scientific updates that we weren't sure whether or not we could believe, or the challenges that none of us were prepared to face. Our God steps in and He offers each of us much-needed guidance 
so that we don't have to tread these uncharted circumstances by ourselves. He's called our wonderful counselor. He's also called our mighty God. He is divinely strong. He is supremely powerful. Nothing in all of creation, there's no storm we'll ever weather, no political agenda standing before us, no virus that threatens us, no government in this world can outmatch the power of our King. If you felt overwhelmed this year, my brothers and sisters, if you feel weak, even this Christmas Eve, Jesus is mighty. He's also called our everlasting Father. Much as any father cares for his children, willing to do whatever it takes to provide for their needs, even risking his own life to protect them from harm, Jesus steps in and he offers divine care for his people. This loving care has no expiration. It is everlasting. It is unceasing care. And it's good for all times. You see, we can count on the everlasting care of our God. And so if you felt alone this year, if you've experienced the feeling of unappreciation my friend Jesus is here for you and he cares for you and lastly Jesus is called our prince of peace this royal son of God brings peace amidst fear calm in the presence of chaos through all of the uncertainty that we faced in the, this year and still yet to face in the coming months we can believe that Jesus can maintain peace in our souls. I know it's been traumatic. I know the waters have been turbulent. But listen to me. Jesus brings peace in the midst of it all. Though the world is weary, we can rejoice with hope-filled expectation because we have faith in a prince of peace. These are the names given to this child born to become king. And 700 years before he was even born, Isaiah prophesied that this child will be born and he will bring with him hope to a broken and fallen world. Each of these names ascribed to the king reflect upon the total sufficiency of Jesus who is able to meet every need in our lives. Isaiah writes with certainty 700 years before he comes. He is guaranteeing us that these promises will be true. The king will come and God will do this for his people. And Isaiah was right. God delivered on his promises. The angel announced this promise by preparing a young couple, Mary and Joseph, for this baby's arrival. But you must understand something. Christmas, it's not about a baby in a manger. That's a detail that we should not miss. But that's not the real purpose. You see, Christmas... It's about the incarnation of the Son of God Himself who came from heaven to save His people from their sins. God has come in the person of Jesus. God left the throne of heaven and He came to establish His heavenly kingdom amongst us here. His reign was inaugurated upon His birth, but it was consummated upon His resurrection. The born king was nailed to a cross. He was raised from the dead. And now he reigns. Now he reigns forever. And here we are 2,000 years later. And we are invited to trust in his rule and his reign in our own lives. If only we will, we will enter into a personal relationship with him. See, this is the choice that you and I get to make. We get to believe upon the name of Jesus. And if we would, 
we live then in relationship with this wonderful counselor, this mighty God, this everlasting Father, this Prince of Peace. And he brings all of his presence into our lives. So may this Christmas serve as a reminder of his coming just for you. I pray your Christmas celebration be centered upon the presence of Jesus in your own life. I mean, of all the years, may this Christmas encourage you to remember the all-sufficient peace of Christ as you have not made it through this year apart from Him. And when this season finally settles down, may you find that your faith in Jesus has grown and has become more vibrant than ever before. And if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, friends, there is no better time to begin one than right now. You see, Jesus was born so that he could be your wonderful counselor, so that he could be your mighty God, your everlasting Father, your Prince of Peace. You can know him for yourself. See, the Bible tells us that if we believe upon the name of Jesus, we can be saved. Would you? right now pray to God announce your faith to him and respond to his invitation for salvation right now in your own words you can tell God how much you want him to be at the center of your life you see the Bible assures us that our faith in him is enough to bring him into our lives if we just believe upon him he will step in and he will do the saving And when you do that, you will find out everything we've learned here tonight is absolutely true. And so if that's a decision you would like to make tonight, we're going to pray right now. And I invite you, just pray in your own words to God and invite Him into your life. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank You so much for sending Your Son, Jesus, to come to be our King. We thank You that He has come to bring His incredible guidance and wisdom as our Counselor. He brings so much power and strength as our mighty God. He brings His care and His love and His protection as our everlasting Father. And He supplies unlimited peace as the Prince of Peace. I thank you, Father, tonight that you sent Jesus for us. And I pray for everyone in our church family and anyone that's watching this right now that they may experience the presence of Jesus in their own lives this Christmas. May this be the beginning of a renewed faith and relationship with God. And may our faith continue to grow in the coming days. Lord, thank you for your presence in our lives this year. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if you are beginning a new relationship with Jesus tonight, we want to know about it. Please reach out to us and let us know. Right below this video, there is a website link. You can click on that link and you'll be given a very short digital card to fill out. That'll just let us know that you watched with us. And if you'll mark on that card, I am beginning a new relationship with Jesus tonight, then we will reach out to you. We want to connect with you. We want to partner with you in this new decision that you're making. And if you don't have a church family, we would love to be that church family for you. See, while following Jesus is a very personal relationship, it's not a private one. And here at Cayuga Christian Church, we believe we actually love each other closer to Jesus, and we want to do that for you too. And so to all of you, our local and extended church family, we love you all. We can't wait to see you again and to worship Jesus with you. And we want to wish you and yours a very Merry Christmas. God bless you. 
Well, church, I hope you enjoyed your time with us this evening. I know this is a little different Christmas Eve than kind of what we're used to if you're joining us online. What we'd encourage you to do uh, going forward from here through the rest of your evening, if you're spending time with family or even just on your own, we'd encourage you to take some time to read your Bible. Grab, grab your Bible, open to Luke chapters 1 and 2, or, and you know, add Matthew two, chapter 2 in there, and read the story about how God came into this world. Um, and if you want to even do more to set the mood, maybe grab YouTube and put a little fireplace on YouTube. If you don't have a real fireplace, that's right. that'd be fun too. Yeah. So enjoy your evening together and remember um, that Jesus Christ and God coming into the world is really why we celebrate this time of year. That's right. Have a great Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody.